I am, I am muted. I am not muted. I am unmuted. Great. Good morning again and welcome and welcome to those of you that are watching online. It's good to see you all here. I'm glad you're here. Sean is gone today. He is traveling with the um, baseball team from Churchill and you need to keep him in his prayers because God gives him continual opportunity to just share Jesus's love with the people there and it's always so exciting to hear what God is doing outside of the church walls. Amen? Amen. I wanted to remind you that this Friday, March 29th from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. is Stations of the Cross here at our church. This is an amazing thing that we do every year. Um, where's Shannon? Is she here? She's not here yet. Um, she does an amazing job, and, and I think she, a lot of you help her with putting up the Stations of the Cross. It's very um, special, it's very memor memorable, and it's something that you want to do and invite people to come and go through it with you. It's Friday, the 29th, 9 to 7. That's Good Friday. We don't have a Good Friday service here, but we have Stations of the Cross all day long. Also in front of you is um, the prayer cards. And I want to say a little bit about this because I like to know, as one of your pastors, what's going on in your life every week. So if you have a special need, write it down. Make sure it gets to us. You can hand it to me personally, um, but it's okay to put it in the offering or there's a box back there still, right? That, that hasn't gone away. Okay. Um, that you can slip it in also. And if you want it to be held confidential just with the pastors, we can do that also. You just need to make a note. If you want it on the prayer chain, uh, let us know that. And then you have a lot of wonderful praying people praying for you. So this is in front um, of your pews if you want to use that. So welcome. And I believe the children were supposed to go at 10 o'clock. Is that correct today? Are the, the children already dismissed? Instead of waiting 15 minutes? Well, they're kind of dismissed. There's some man, strange man that's in their way, but he's moving. <laughs> okay, welcome. And let's worship God together. morning. Would you stand with me this morning if you can and let's raise a hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemy. I raise a hallelujah than the unbelief. I raise a hallelujah. My weapon is a melody. I raise a hallelujah. Heaven comes to fight for me. I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm. Louder and louder, you're gonna hear my praises roar. Up from the ashes, praise will arise. Death is defeated, the king is alive. I raise a hallelujah. Everything inside of me. I raise a hallelujah. Watch the darkness flee. I raise a hallelujah in the middle of the mystery. I raise a hallelujah. Feel you must your hold on me. And I'm gonna say in the middle of the storm, louder and louder, you're gonna hear my praises roar. Up from the ashes, hope will arise. 
David's defeated, the king is alive. Sing a little louder in the presence of my enemies. Sing a little louder, louder than the unbelief. Sing a little louder, my weapon is a melody. Sing a little louder, heaven comes to fight for me. I'm going to sing. In the middle of the storm, louder and louder, gonna hear my praises roar. Up from the ashes, hope will arise. Death is defeated, the king is alive. I raise a hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah. just attended a concert the other night and um, the singer and she was a professional had to have a drink of water every other verse and I was like yes because that's happening to me this morning <clears throat> three songs here pray with me before I spoke a word you were singing over me You've been so good. You have been so, so good to me. Before I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. You have been so, so kind to me. Oh, the overwhelming never. Serve it. Still, you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. When I was your foe, your love fought for me. You have been so, so good to me. When I, I felt no worth, worth, you paid it all for me. You've, You've been, been so, so, so kind to me. Serve it, still you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, law you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, law you won't tear down, coming after me. Chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the 99. I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it. Still, you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God.
then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art. We're singing songs of praise, of hallelujah, of greatness this morning. Because I don't know about you, but when I see the stars, when I hear the thunder, the power throughout the universe displayed, then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art. Sometimes we maybe just need to stop and say, Lord, you are great. You are wonderful. You are merciful. You love us. We love you and how great you are this morning. Oh, Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sing my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art, then saints my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art. Beautiful. 
world, beautiful singing. Um, I was asked to mention that the reason the children went down early is they're preparing something special for us next week on Easter Sunday. And they're going to be practicing in here right after the service. So when we are done here, if you can remember that and take your visiting out to the foyer, that would help them get started right away. Am I talking loud enough, Bob? He's my guide there. So uh, come forward for the offering. This is something we do as part of our worship. Um, but if you're visiting with us today, don't feel at all obligated uh, to take part in this, this part of the worship. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for your presence. And we now just give to you. Um, we love you. Be with us as we spend this time together in fellowship listening to your word and praising you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Pastor Sean, I almost call him Pastor Bob. Why do I do that? I used to do that all the time with uh, Pastor Dave. I don't know. Pastor Sean. Pastor Bob does sound kind of good, though, doesn't it? Pastor Sean has been teaching or preaching on the I Am statements of Jesus. And um, he preached on I Am the Bread of Life. I am the light, and last week, I am the gate, or the door, the gate that goes in and out of the sheep pen, so that the sheep pen can go in through the gate. This is found in the 10th chapter of John, and that's where we're going to be today, the 10th chapter of John. And later in the chapter, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. This is an image that has comforted people for many years in many different situations. In fact, when you saw on the slide or you heard me say, I am the good shepherd, very possibly there was a vision that came to your mind, maybe of Jesus with a lamb on his shoulders or cut arms. It's a wonderful vision. And um, in John 10, 11, Jesus is talking and he says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. The hired man is not the shepherd who owns the sheep. So when the hired man sees the wolf coming, he leaves the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired man and does not care for the sheep. There's a comparison here. Two types of shepherd. Those who are working for someone and the one who actually owns the sheep. The owner of the sheep is willing to stay during time of attacks to fight for his sheep because he has a lot more invested, doesn't he? And there's a distinction here. One shepherd sees problems that are too much for him to handle. He fears for himself, so he leaves. The other shepherd will stay and conquer the enemy. The other shepherd knows how to take care of the enemy. Verse 14. 
I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me. As the Father knows me, and I know the Father, I lay down my life for the sheep. Now, the metaphor of the shepherd has its roots in the Old Testament. And early, as early as Genesis, the book of Genesis and the Holy Scripture, God is referred to as a shepherd. Genesis 49, we find a very important phrase. Jacob is praising God for keeping Joseph, his son, safe. And this is what he says. But his, Joseph's, bow remained steady. His strong arm stayed limber. Because the hand of the mighty one of Jacob, because of the shepherd, the rock of Israel. This is a description of God. This is a description as how he wants to relate to his people. Isaiah 40, 11. <clears throat> is this working? Why am I feeling funny? It's in and out. So if I gave the sermon twice, we probably catch it all. do tape it. You want to bring me up a piece of tape? I'll stick it on here. It's there in the booth. If you want to. On the, maybe that's what would help. It's next to you, Norm, in the booth. The tape. Okay. We'll keep going while the tape man. The prophet Isaiah writes, tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lamb in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He leads those that have young. Thank you. A step of preparation I forgot. Is that better? Okay, because then it stays close to my mouth. It might be better, it might not be better. Okay, keep talking. Okay, the prophet Isaiah writes, he tends his flock like a shepherd, gathers the lamb in his arms, and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those that have young. This is a shepherd who is very aware of the specific needs of those in his flock. In Ezekiel, God himself says these words. It's wonderful. The prophet Ezekiel shares. This is God speaking. As a shepherd looks after his scattered flock, when he is with them, so will I look after my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places where they were scattered on a day of clouds and darkness. Have you ever felt scattered and in a dark place? God says, I will rescue you. Now, the Apostle John is writing, recording Jesus' words. And he's, Jesus is telling those listening, I am the good shepherd. We should be aware of who those are that are listening. It's not only his apostles, but it is the religious leaders, such as the Pharisees, who are listening to Jesus and what he was, Jesus was trying to communicate. Now, the religious leaders are really struggling with this man, Jesus, and what he was saying and what he was doing. Specifically, this thing about like miracles and raising people from the dead, that really had them on their toes. We're still digesting what had happened earlier, um, in chapter 9, when he healed the blind man, and he brought, they brought the blind man into, uh, and they went it into the synagogue, and they said, okay, who healed you? What happened? And the blind man wasn't really forthcoming, and he definitely was not going to discredit the man that healed him. And so the Pharisees got a little bit upset. Sean talked about this last week. They're upset because the man that was healed was not saying anything that was going to discredit this man, Jesus. So Jesus knows that. He knows the religious leaders are against him. They want him to be proven a fraud. They want people to say, oh, you're a fake. They don't want people to follow Jesus. So here he is talking about being the good shepherd. Here he is saying, I am special. You need to follow me. But not only am I special, but my sheep are special. He's not just talking about himself. He is introducing a relationship between the good shepherd and the sheep, his people, who recognize him and trust him to lead. These sheep are later called 
Christians in the book of Acts, which means little Christ, and they're later referred to as the church. The sheep are us. So John, Matthew, Mark, Luke, all the gospel writers have been preaching and sharing the life of Christ for a number of years. And then they decide, you know, we need to record this because we're not going to be around forever. So they start writing it down. And now, so we get John's word here. And he's telling us what Jesus has said, what Jesus' words was. Last week, Sean uh, preached about, I am the gate. Let's look at those uh, verses again, 2 and 4 of John chapter 10. The one who enters by the gate is a shepherd of his sheep. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his sheep, he goes on ahead of them. His sheep follow him because... They know his voice. That's what makes us his sheep. When we were in Israel, we got to actually see a shepherd leading his sheep. And that's exactly what they do. The shepherd was walking in front of these hundreds of sheep, and they were just following along. One person leading hundreds of sheep. It was really a wonderful, wonderful sight. Then in chapter 14, or verse 14 again, let's look at this again. I am the good shepherd. I know my own sheep, and they know me. As the Father knows me, and I know the Father, I lay down my life for the sheep. Now the word know here comes from a Greek word that actually means to recognize, to be aware, and to understand. So if you were to ask me, do you know Susie? And I'm going, Susie. Yeah, she sits the third row, the third row back in church on the end. Oh, yeah, I know her. Basically, I'm saying, I've seen her there. I know who you're talking about. That's not that kind of no. This is the kind of no where I would know Susie, and I would know where she worked, and I would know how many children she had. I would know if she's married or single. I would maybe even know her age and her birthday, and I would know what she looked like. And if she called me on the phone and started talking, I would be able to say, this sounds like Susie. That's the kind of no this is. So I'm going to read again of Isaiah 40.11. I love this verse. I want to unpack this verse a little bit for us, because this gives us a look at a very intimate shepherd. He leads his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lamb in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those who have young. This is very poetic, isn't it? It kind of pulls you into an intimate relationship with God the shepherd. I want you to feel his arms around you. I want you to know how much he cares. So th this is some of my personal thoughts about this, this verse. He gathers the lamb in his arms. What he is doing, he is he's carrying those who cannot walk yet or who cannot walk very far, those maybe newly born to the flock, baby Christians. He carries you because he wants you to keep up, and he knows you're just learning. He wants them to know that he loves them, so where does he carry them? He carries them close to his heart. That's where you keep the things that are the most special to you, is in your heart. Very, very much so. Um, he gently leads those who have young where we are in our each stage of our life and he leads us according to that stage if we have the responsibility of parenting he will lead us in our parenting he knows we need security when we're leading someone else he sees burdens that this life has put on us and he wants to lead through those burdens. 
Sheep do best in a flock. We do best in a group. But he sees each of us as individuals. When he looks at his flock, he knows if one is missing. A good shepherd knows when one of his sheep is injured, is tired, needs nourishment, and needs to be carried. The relationship God has been offering is here in the Gospel of John when Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. Now John, the writer of the Gospel John, walked with Jesus. He experienced Jesus saying this. He experienced Jesus' healing. He talked to Jesus. So when he records, I am the good shepherd, when he records that later, I need to write these words down so that people will know Jesus is offering this relationship. He shared this good news with all that would listen. Jesus was speaking to everyone that was listening. John says, I've got to write this down so that people will know for years and years and years the gospel story. I can imagine this was probably an extremely thrilling thing to do to write the gospels out. Don't you think it will be fun when we get to heaven to sit down with Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and say, tell me, what parts did you leave out that I need to know? Maybe even. Verse 16, this is, he says this, and this really surprises the people listening. He says, but I have other sheep. And they are not of this fold. Who would this be? I bring them also and they will listen to my voice. Then there will be one flock, one shepherd. He's talking about the people that are not Jews. He's talking about the Gentiles. Now remember, the religious leaders are listening. This makes them say, makes them think, he's crazy. This man is crazy. What is he talking about? Now, the, the book of John was written down about um, 80, 81 to 96, so about 50 years after the resurrection. And it was written by John, like I've already said. John was a brother of James and the apostle that Jesus loves. So this is, being, this is kind of a love Love letter, the book of John. It's written by somebody that really loved Jesus. And John records this time with Jesus because he wants others to believe and receive the gospel story. He's writing firsthand experiences here. We can read about Jesus, what he said, what he did, who he healed. When we pick up the gospels, we can know him through that. I am the good shepherd. Jesus invites all who are listening to come into his fold, come through him as the gate, and let him lead. He wants people to hear that he is offering to take care of them. He is offering to lead, lead them, and he is offering to save them. He is willing to lay his life down. He is offering salvation. Verse 24, <clears throat> then the Jews surround him and ask, how long are you going to keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. And this is what Jesus said. He said, I did tell you and you don't believe. The works that I do in my Father's name testifies about me. What he's saying is, watch me, hear me, listen to me. I'm not keeping it a secret. If you listen to me, voice and hear my voice you will understand 26 but you do not believe because you are not my sheep my sheep hear my voice i know them and they follow me he's pretty clear here about who his sheep are they are the ones that recognize him enough to trust in him completely to believe he is who he says he is. It's the church. It's the church. Now the church does become scattered during persecution. 
And he brings them back together, just like he says he will do. Later in John, the author makes it clear his intent for sharing Jesus' life with us, for writing the account of Jesus' life. In uh, chapter 20, verse 21, he says, but these things are written so that you may believe Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God. And by believing, you may have life in his name. That's eternal life. All through the gospel, it's clear that John's desire is to communicate the importance of who Jesus is and that we can know him and why he came and that we could know him and that he came and that we could, he personally wants to change our lives. John 3.16. How many of you know John 3.16? Let's say it together. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but... Amen. That's the message that John is sharing. And Jesus now is saying, I am the good shepherd, and my sheep know me, and I know my sheep. He wants to, us to see, and the people there to hear, the relationship he is offering. I'm not just offering to take care of you. I'm offering to be in relationship with you. And he passes this message on to everyone. God wants to be in relationship with you and speak into your life. He wants everyone to trust him as a sheep trusts the shepherd. He wants everyone to know the security and joy of following his leading. So what have we learned about the good shepherd last week and this week? Characteristics of the shepherd or a simple summary of how you would say what you've learned about the shepherd. Well, he is the door. He is the gate. He is speaking about a relationship with those who trust him, follow him. Those who, uh, those who come through him, through the gate, into their pen, into the church. He is the gate. He's a protector of his flock. He feeds the flock. He speaks to his sheep. They know his voice. He directs to the pastors where they're to feed, willing to lay down his life. He knows the enemy. He knows the enemy and what the enemy is going to do, so he's prepared for the enemy. He knows his sheep by name. How special is that? I don't know if you've heard the story about Beth Moore. She's a Bible um, a study person, and she has a lot of Bible studies out. And She shared once that her mom used to pray for her and she used to pray for Beth Moore and then she'd give the address and Beth asked her once mom why do you do that and she goes well there's so many Beths in the world I want to make sure he knows which one I'm praying for his sheep know him and know his voice so this is the Bible scene this is taking place here in John 10 that John is recording um, this is what's happening. So we have this man named Jesus who's going around and he's doing amazing signs. He's healing, he's raising people from the dead. He's doing great miracles. He's just amazing the people. And people are starting to think, wait a minute, maybe he's the Messiah. So now he introduces himself as the good shepherd who loves his sheep and wants to surround himself with the sheep. The sheep know his voice. The religious leaders are getting very, very nervous. They want Jesus to look like he's uncaring. They want Jesus to look untruthful and just plain unimpressive. They want to do whatever they can to discredit Jesus. But he was doing these miracles, and more and more people were following him. They were just very nervous. So this is the scene when he announces I am the good shepherd. This is what's going on. Now, a number of years ago, Dave and I had an experience with sheep. It's not an easy story to tell because you'll realize that 
Dave and I aren't real smart sometimes, but we've been on our property not very long, and we were talking to some friends of ours about how hard it was to keep the grass down in our pasture. Those of you that have been out there, the pasture where all our son's stuff is now for his <laughs> job, um, was actually a pasture, and it took a lot to keep it mowed. And they said, our friend said, well, we have a couple sheep that we need to get rid of. Oh, that would be neat. Put the sheep out there. They'll keep the grass down, right? Isn't that what sheep do? Sure. The problem is our pasture wasn't fenced at the time, and we didn't really have the funds to fence it. But we came up with this idea. We came up with this idea to make a lightweight, like, big playpen. You know, it was eight by eight, and we made this pin for the sheep, and our plans was to every three, four, five hours to go out there and just move the pin with the sheep in it. You know, you'd only raise it up this much. Move the pin and put it down, and then they would eat that pasture, and then you move it over here, put it down, and they'd eat this part of the pasture. I mean, it's like a great idea, and we're thinking, guy, you know, that way, that it's kind of like, you know, uh, uh, lawnmower that you only have to use every three or four hours, you know, go out there and, and mow the lawn. So we, we made, Dave made a pen, and we put the sheep in it. Uh, one of the sheep's name, I, I can't remember the other ones, but one of the sheep's name was <laughs> Amram. And there's a reason he was called Amram. Anything that moved on two legs, he thought he needed to just run and ram. And we found that out real easy. So I was really glad we finally got them in this pen. And, um, uh, after a couple hours, they were just wanting to, they were making the, the sheep noise, bah, bah, only it was really loud, and it's really not that nice, and so we went out there, and sure enough, they'd eaten, but they'd eaten around the edges, and there was all this pasture in the middle, and we were trying to shoo them into the middle, and they're just looking at us going, bah, bah, bah. so, well, we'll move it, so we moved it a little bit, so that then the middle part would be on the edge and uh, you get the idea so we did this for a couple days <laughs> and they they'd get to the edge and they would just push against the um, pin and we knew that one day they would get out and we also knew this wasn't working so we were making plans to try to get the pasture fenced in well 5 30 6 o'clock one morning they pushed against that pin and they got out and our neighbor was putting their garbage out, our neighbor lady. And we get a phone call. Her husband's hysterical. The sheep had gotten out, and Amram had gone after her. She ran into the barn. She shut the barn door. And Amram is just mm, in the barn door. He calls us, come get your sheep. He's going to kill my wife. So Dave did. Dave got up, and he went up, and he got the sheep and put them back in the pen, and we just, this isn't working. So those sheep <clears throat> that I had never, ever gotten to know went in the truck this morning and went to the livestock auction. I don't know what happened to them, and I do not care. I got a demon in sheep keeping, I guess. I don't even think anybody would use me as a hired hand. I mean, this it was pretty bad. Um, and a couple of years later, I was talking to a sheep farmer, and I was telling about it, and he was laughing. Well, this is what you did wrong. This is what you did. He says, I always tell people, you don't just get one, two, three, or four sheep. You need at least eight, because sheep find security in the flock. They do not like to be by themselves. He says, in fact, when a sheep wanders, it's because they've wandered a little ways away and they've lost sight of their flock or their shepherd and they actually go looking for their shepherd. He says that, that, that's why they wander, is they, they somehow get separated from the group. And that's why the enemy will come in and scatter them, like the wolf, so that they can, because they can be attacked one by one. He says, so that, you know, two sheep I would have never, never recommended you did that. He says, and the other, and then he asked me, he says, how much time did you spend in the pen with them? You're kidding, right? I never went in that pen. <laughs> I didn't even like moving the pen. And um, he says, well, that's another thing. He says, they didn't get to know you. He says, the best thing a sheep herder can do is to walk among their sheep when they're feeding 
and let them know you're there and speak to them. They're, they're going to be happy sheep then. They're not going to wonder. They're going to have the security. Now, the one thing we did do right in the fact that we kept leading them to different, different grass because sheep do need to be told, now you need to go over there and eat, and you need to go over here and eat, and there, and they need to be told, avoid the rocky places and all that. So we did kind of, that part we had down, the fact that we needed to move them around the patch. But we never taught them to follow us. In fact, he said he probably went after the neighbor's wife because he heard her. He heard her. Sheep have extremely good hearing, hyper hearing. And he heard the noise and he went looking for security. He went looking. And when she locked herself in that barn, he's thinking, oh, wait, I need somebody. I need somebody to tell me what to do. And that's what he was trying to do. He was trying to find someone to take care of him. Um, when I was doing this research, I got online and I, I saw this really good education video. And it was the, the woman had just done it on her phone. And she was probably in her mid-20s. Uh, and she was a sheep herder. And um, that's what they're called now instead of shepherds. I don't know, sheep herders. Uh, at least that's what I found when I went online. And um, she was doing this for this um, education video for, I think, elementary school children. And so she says, I'm going to take you into my sheep barn. And so she opens this sheep barn, and you know, you, you're seeing this all on the phone. And there's just hundreds of sheep in there. She goes, this is the sheep barn. The sheep are feeding. And she goes in, and she starts walking among the sheep. And she goes, oops. And the sheep turn around. They quit eating, and they're all coming at her. And she goes, this is what happens when they hear my voice. They want to follow me. They know my voice. She said that right on the video. I thought, wow. So another thing you maybe thought of when you heard I was going to preach about the Good Shepherd is Psalms 23. That's such a beautiful, beautiful prayer. It's actually a prayer of trust. Oh, and David wrote this. King David wrote this. Now, David was somebody that knew what it was like to follow the shepherd and to not follow the shepherd. Because he had a lot of decisions he made in his life that took him out of the path that the shepherd wanted him on. But he never doubted that he should be following the shepherd. He knew that God was there for him, and he knew that God uh, forgave him, and he knew that ultimately his security came from being able to talk to God about himself and his situation and know that God heard him. That's where his security came from. He experienced a very hard life. He experienced running from his enemies numerous times, great grief. And most of these were consequences of his sinful choices. But he really experienced the presence of God, a deep faith in God during these times of bad choices. He in continually invited God into his personal life. He wanted God to lead him. Well, let's look at Psalms 23, the first four verses. A wonderful, wonderful prayer of trust. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He recognizes God's God Lord as his provider. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He knew the importance of rest and quiet and peace if you're going to be able to hear God's voice. He knew the importance of being led to a place where the distractions are gone and he can enjoy the presence of God. And he also believed that God would lead him where he needed to go to experience this. Verse 3, he restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. He restores my soul. God continued to love David even during his times of wandering. A shepherd goes after his sheep 
and will get them back on the path they are to travel. God wants to help us navigate our life journey. Verse 4, even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. The rod was the main tool of the shepherd. It was used to kind of get him back on the path. Hey, come on, buddy, you need to go over here. It was also used, I'm told, to count the sheep. So as the sheep were going in the fold at night, they would touch each sheep to count them. David found that a comfort. He found that image a comfort because he thought, God knows who I am and where I am. He found that as a comfort. The staff is like a rod with a hook, and that was used to correct, to kind of get the, the, keep the sheep from going maybe over the cliff or something, you know. So it was a protection also. Shepherding today, I think the message is the same. God is inviting us into a special personal relationship with him. A relationship of trust. A relationship where you know he is our protector and provider. A relationship of listening to his voice. So these are my concluding thoughts. At the worship team, you can come up while I share my concluding thoughts here and get ready for our, our final song. So how do we do this? How do we hear his voice? You know, if I had time to sit down and talk with each of you individually, I would get some amazing stories. I know it. And they'd be individual stories about a time you knew God was speaking to you or a time you heard his voice specifically give instructions or a time you were in scripture and that scripture just popped out and you it was what you had been praying for. It was divine intervention. And that's really my go-to. My go-to is scripture. Um, when I'm trying to hear, get directions from God, I will look to scripture. That's probably my first. But others, we go to others for counseling. Bible tells us to go to others for counseling and to seek wisdom, to ask for wisdom from God. Seek discernment and ask for discernment. And the Holy Spirit... You know, it's, it's just a quiet, still knowing voice. How many of you have read Pastor Sean's blog this week? Oh, it's all about communicating with God, and it's wonderful. Read it. It is in, I think it's in the handout today that was handed out. Where's Karen? Karen puts it in that. So if you picked up a bulletin, his blog is in there. Read that. It will bless you. It's about communicating with God, some of his testimony and some of his experiences. So Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. In the Old Testament, he wanted the Israelites to know, I want this relationship with you. And now Jesus is talking to those in the New Testament. And uh, it's before he was crucified and rose again. He says, I am the good shepherd. I lay down my life for my sheep, but... I take it up again. What are we celebrating next week? Easter. The good shepherd. He laid down his life for his sheep, but he rose again. So the message is the same in 2024 to the church today. This is what, this is what the message is. I want God wants a relationship with you. God if you know God, you will know his voice. You will know he cares. You will trust in him. And he says, I know you and I love you. And I promise to lead you in such a way that you will be secure forever. Forever. What a wonderful gift to give us. I am the good shepherd. Let's pray. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, I thank you for this message. I thank you for John's willingness to record 
his time with Jesus and to show us his heart. Lord, I pray for each person here and online. I pray for our church family that we will experience the presence of the Good Shepherd in our lives every single day, and that we will draw closer and learn more and more about his voice and him speaking to us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Amen. We're going to um, have Dave sing a song for us. And you may be seated. We're just going to soak it in. And I really, we used to say this when we were kids. We, before we would sing, we would say, I'll listen to the words. Well, I'm assuming we're all doing that anyway. But I do want us to listen to the words specifically on this song that talks about the God who stays, the shepherd that stays with us. I will hear you would have given up on me by now. I would have labeled me a lost cause because I just feel like a lost cause. If I were you, I would have turned away and walked away. I would have labeled me beyond repair. Because I feel like I'm beyond repair. But somehow you don't see me like I do. Somehow you're still here. You're the God who stays. You're the God who stays. You're the one who runs in my direction. When the whole world walks away, you're the God who stands. With wide open arms And you tell me Nothing I have ever done Can separate my heart From the God who stayed I used to hide Every time I thought I let you down I always thought I had to earn my way But I'm learning you don't work that way Somehow you don't see me like I do. Somehow you're still here. You're the God who stays. You're the God who stays. You're the one who runs in my direction. When the whole world rocks away, you're the God who stands with wide open arms. And you tell me nothing I have ever done Can separate my heart from the God who stays My shame can't separate My guilt can't separate My past can't separate I'm yours forever My sin separate my scars can't separate my failures can't separate i'm yours forever no enemy can separate no power of hell can take away your love for me it will never change i'm yours forever you're the god who you're the God who stays. You're the one who runs in my direction. When the whole world walks away, you're the God who stands. With wide open arms, and you tell me nothing I have ever done. To separate my heart from the God who stays. You're the God who stays. You're the one who runs in my direction. When the whole world walks away, you're the God who stands with wide open arms. And you tell me nothing I have ever done could separate my heart from the God who stands.
please stand with us and we will dismiss you today. Take the words that have been spoken, the prayers that have been prayed, the songs that have been sung with you today and this holy week prior to Easter. And again, I would remind you if we could um, kind of get out quickly so we can bring our kids in for their rehearsal and they will be singing for you next Sunday. So be here early because they're going to bring all their parents and friends and our first song is with the kids so you don't want to miss it so everybody be here early and on time and now we're going to pray and um, ask that the lord bless our day father we thank you for this beautiful day we thank you for this beautiful congregation lord those that are here in person and those online father we just ask that you will bless their day we ask that you will remind us each and every day of the goodness of God, that you will remind us that you're the God who stays, that you're the good shepherd that reaches out for every one of us. We thank you in your name. Amen.